Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is part two of the Emerson Model 31. Um, I have been, well my first video said it was in 1936, but a little more detective work. Uh, it is actually a 1934 radio, so a couple years older than I thought. And looking at radio retailing magazine april of 34 again doing more detective work i found the advertisement for it 29.95 so i gotta convert that into 2024 dollars and see see what that is but here it is um you know these little radios uh i think were pretty popular in the depression era because they were low cost and they were simple um, and people could afford them. So the update uh, is I've tested all the tubes and the tubes are all good. In fact, they all tested really well, which was a surprise to me. They are all RCA Cunningham Radiotron tubes. So I am guessing that Emerson had a contract with RCA uh, for the supply of the tubes. Um, the chassis, I just wiped it down with some water and um, just a light damp towel, cleaned it up, not going crazy. Um, I'm not going to polish this chassis or anything, but just wanted to clean it up, get rid of the dust, vacuum the dust out, blew it out with compressed air, and it came out pretty good. So um, I'll flip it over. Actually, the speaker is in perfect condition. I'm very happy about that. Um... So here's the bottom of the chassis again, uh, these mica mold wax caps. I did take the old block electrolytic out. I marked the wires per the schematic where they go. But this electrolytic, it looks like it has suffered a failure. And that's maybe why this radio was put up in the attic, who knows when, many years ago. It's uh, it's leaked out tar. It's got a burn mark on it. And um, I'm sure that this would test bad. Um, I do have a capacitor checker, but I'm, I'm just going to trash this. Um, I'm thinking about doing something with this block to gut it out and put in um, new modern electrolytics inside of it um, to kind of go with a nostalgia theme again on um, uh, just trying to preserve uh you know the look of it although this is you know it's underneath the chassis what what i've done on the um old wet electrolytics on a prior project i stuffed them um and put them back um so i wanted to talk about these resistors here this resistor, and then there's another resistor right here. This one right here. These are mica mold resistors, and I've never seen these before. I don't know how common they are in old radios. Um, if someone knows, please leave me a comment. But they actually have an arrow cast into the plastic case that shows you the direction. And this is the standard color coding. But um, Mike Amold, who makes these capacitors, they made millions of them, um, um, also made these um, molded resistors. So they're kind of neat. Um, I tested a few of them. They are uh, high in value. So I'm going to have to replace them. This is a very, very congested chassis. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. The other thing I noticed right up here 
And here, these are flexi ohm resistors, which are found in these 1930 radio sets. Um, the silver tone I just did had a flexi ohm uh, resistor, which I replaced with a, I think I put a seven watt resistor in there, uh, in its place, a modern wire wound resistor. Uh, these are not testing open. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, whether I'm going to leave them or take them out. I'm probably going to take them out. This coil tested good. This coil tested good. The power supply choke tested good. Um, the speaker field coil tested good and the speaker audio coil tested good. So this is all good news. Um, so I marked the wires with little tags, five microfarad section and an eight microfarad section. And it was a 16 microfarad section. So, uh, I'm going to start ordering parts and get on with it. Um, these, I'm sure, are leaky. They're 90 years old. They've got to go. <laughs> Again, and my philosophy is these have to come out. There's no sense restoring a radio and leaving 90 old capacitors in it. That's my personal philosophy. Others can, you know, have a different view. But um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, the resistance values on the voice coil I had uh, one home here, 303 ohms here. Uh, let's see, 455 ohms on the power supply choke, and uh, the speaker field coil was um, 2800 ohms. So nothing needs to be rewound. Nothing is a showstopper here, so far. Anyway, so let me just flip this back. Uh, there's my tube tester, my trusty Model 205 uh, Electronic Measurements Corporation. I think this was probably made in the 1940s. I've had this tube tester for many, many years. My mother got it at a yard sale. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we're at right now. The 1934 Emerson Model 31. Um, and um, I'll be ordering parts and moving to phase three. Take care, everybody. Have a good day and a good weekend. Bye.